This is the Drummond 1 horsepower Harbor Freight sprinkler pump that's currently selling for about $150. I've created a sprinkler system for my yard for less than $500, including sprinklers, hoses, the pump, foot valve, everything that you need basically to run the pump. The pump that I have is currently set up to pull water from a lake and then water my approximately half an acre lot running three walking sprinklers and it has somewhat automated my lawn watering for an affordable cost. Basically I set up three walking sprinklers on three sides of my house where there's lawn and uh, the walking sprinklers travel along the hose and um, water each section of yard. This is the pump and uh, it's purchased from Harbor Freight. That's an Aqua Joe four-way splitter for the top from Amazon and um, on the end of the Harbor Freight hose I use a foot valve that I purchased from Home Depot and then using things on hand I've used half a minnow trap here and then I wrap the minnow trap in a you can get a pump net you know some material that allows the water to come through uh, but doesn't allow the sediment to come through so that you're pumping clean water into the hose and so obviously this can be improved upon with some kind of pump net in a cage but basically the foot valve here from Home Depot is that small skinny piece with the holes in it. It allows water to come into the hose, but it does not allow water to come out of the hose, which keeps your pump primed. And um, what I've done is mounted a minnow trap to a cinder block. So I have a cinder block sitting on the bottom of the lake and I have the foot valve inside the minnow trap wrapped in a mesh of sorts to keep it up off the bottom of the water and to ensure that mostly clean water is coming into the pump and onto the lawn. This is the Aqua Joe four-way splitter. I've run typically run three walking sprinklers off from it. This pump provides probably a little bit more water flow than my standard well living out in the country. And uh, I have run a fourth sprinkler for a garden, just a standard uh, lawn sprinkler that swivels. Um, and the pump has had enough water pressure to supply three walking sprinklers and one swivel sprinkler. And so for the walking sprinklers, I am running hundreds of foot of hose. I probably have 200 foot of hose running to one, 150 foot of hose running to another, and approximately 125 foot of hose running to the third. I take the sprinkler to the end of the hose, start it up, and allow the pump to run and the walking sprinklers to slowly crawl along until the lawn's been fully mowed, watered, with my particularly particular setup if you have a quarter acre to a half an acre of land uh, for me to run around the three sides of my house um, and water all of the lawn it takes up to three hours for them to complete the run and then you could set up an automatic shutoff and a timer would you like but I just run out and turn the pump on when I start kind of set the time in my head and go out and shut it off after about three hours and that normally accomplishes what I need to. Two of the sprinklers are being, uh, are elevated about a story maybe 10 to 15 feet high so the hoses are running uphill a couple hundred feet and uh, it still seems to work fine. I do use three quarter inch hoses. Most garden hoses have the same size fitting on the end, I believe it's 5 8 um, regardless on whether it's a standard, a standard garden hose would be 5 8 inches, I believe, 
and these are three quarters in diameter, which does allow a lot more water flow. Um, the intake hose on the pump itself is a little bit larger. It may be a one inch. It's sold at Harbor Freight and sitting right next to the pump or something that's available online. It's, it's the, the green hose that looks like it would go with the green Drummond pump. In my particular setup, I have a 110 outlet installed near the lake, but I still have to run an extension cord to the pump that's probably 50 feet long, and I have that running through a conduit that I have buried in the ground. I also have some hose buried in conduit running along the side of the property so that not all of the hose is exposed. I will link all of these products below. This is my first video and it will not be affiliate links, but I will share the links to the products so that you at least know what I'm using. And um, I have waited to make this video to make sure this is time tested. This um, is 2022 and I just finished up my third season running this setup with these hoses. I will say that during the time of the three years, I have had a couple leaks in these three quarter inch hoses that I did purchase from Home Depot. I'm not sure if they're still available there. I'll link below. But they're three quarters garden hoses. Uh, you could invest more money in a higher quality hose. I would say overall, I've been happy with how these have performed, even though I've gotten a couple holes uh, and had to repair a couple hose ends over the course of a few years as just standard use has caused some wear and tear um, on it. I will say that I also have had some times where I haven't checked the uh, pump inlet in the water. I think this really only happened once or twice where my fabric has come off or my mesh to, to screen out the sediment has come off and some dirt and sediment has built up around the minnow trap and, and the foot valve and um, obviously I'm looking to improve that this next season because of those recent issues but it actually has never obstructed the water flow in a way that has been noticeable to me um, yet it's more when I've checked on it I've noticed that there's some sediment in there that's built up. I primarily wanted to make this video to help out someone who's trying to use a water source to water their lawn to save on their well or reduce their city water bill. If you have access to a river or creek or pond or lake and can install a system like this, you can do it for $500 or less depending on how much hose you need and the size of your yard and things of that nature. But I thought it was very efficient to have a pump that has worked well for me, which can be plugged into a standard outlet, which can pull water from about any source. I've seen some people use the uh, rain gutters to capture water into a barrel a rain barrel for watering their lawns. I'm sure there's some configuration that could also be set up using this pump with that arrangement. I had watched some videos on YouTube when I purchased this system and I want to thank everybody who has previously made videos on this pump because they were very useful and I see that there's been a number of views on those videos and so there must be some interest in this product and, and people finding uses for it, whether it's a farm or, or a lawn watering or whatever the case may be. And um, I wanted to make this video as um, it may be more relevant to someone's situation, such as mine, where I couldn't get a good understanding from some of the videos uh, as far as the amount of water flow and and you know what it's capable of and things of that nature so I had to kind of do some homework as to um, 
you know, how this would work for my system before buying. And then I went through a number of trial and error with my system. I didn't start with the walking sprinklers. I started with standard uh, sprinklers for the lawn. The walking sprinklers were an evolution to better cover the lawn. For example, in my front yard, I probably water 50 foot width with the walking sprinkler by adjusting the propellers on the top, if that's the right word to use. Uh, but in the side yard, I um, run probably 10 to 15 foot width by adjusting those, those top arms on the sprinkler. Um, and so they've come in handy on, for example, my side yard, where I need to run perhaps a hundred foot length, but only water a width of 10 to 15, maybe 20 feet um, in spots. Um, and so it's been very efficient as to avoid having to rotate sprinklers around the yard by incorporating the walking sprinklers into the setup. I put together this rudimentary drawing of kind of my situation where I have the house, the backyard, the side yard, and the front yard. And as I said before, you know, the front yard is is kind of at the first story of the house, and we have a walkout on the back side. And so you have a couple hundred feet of hose running to the front yard, and it's running uphill uh, to get to the front yard. And uh, again, with the side yard running across the entire backyard, that's the, it's underground, and then it runs up around the side yard. It's probably 150 foot of hose running up there. And so the hoses are running, you know, uphill to, you know, several feet. And, um, and it's still able to produce uh, a good amount of water flow enough to adequately water my lawn. And uh, I know a lot, a lot of you have, will have similar size lawns and be able to find a solution similar. There's a sliver in the front yard you see there on the other side of the driveway that's blank, and we basically just leave that up to uh, Mother Nature because it's really not that noticeable. One malfunction that is definitely worth mentioning is if you look in the end of the pump, there's a what I'll call a propeller or prop, that, that wheel in there that um, if you don't run the pump for several days, it can seize up. And so what I've done is on occasion, you know, you go out and you turn the pump on and you can tell that the water's not running as soon as you turn the pump on. You just hear kind of a murmur uh, of the pump, you know, receiving power, but, but that prop's not turning and so it's not pumping water. And so what I've done in those cases is basically just take a small object and reach in and give the pump a little bit of a turn, uh, get, or give the prop a little bit of a turn, and um, then it breaks free from being seized, as you can see in this picture, and um, basically it, it, that breaks it loose. And so then I will turn it back on, and um, it resumes running just fine. I've been told that this is an issue that uh, the pump shouldn't have, but it hasn't been that much of an inconvenience. If I'm running it every day, every other day, every few days, haven't had an issue. It's when you have five, six days of rain or, you know, you're not running it for five or six days that you end up having this issue. And of course, I always turn the pump off immediately when I notice this issue and then turn the wheel or the prop and then start it back up and make sure it's running just fine and I've never had an issue after you just give it a small turn. Obviously there are a lot of ways you can improve upon this system and I'm um, not suggesting that I have the best system in place. It's a little bit of a country setup but um, you could install a roof over the pump which would shelter it from the elements. I think that would extend the life of the pump. As you can see here in the pictures, I have uh, just kind of tacked up some wood in place and what I've done is mounted the hoses to that wood, basically just to prevent a kink in the hose above the pump. Um, and this has worked just fine. Of course, you could have a more elaborate or professional 
set up to this, but um, just utilizing a small budget, this is the quick solution that I've come up with. I haven't any problems with the hoses kinking coming off from the pump. So thank you for your time spent watching. I hope that this is helpful for you in, in your situation. And again, I apologize for the, uh, for the lack of sophistication in the video. This is my first video that I've made. And again, I'm basically just making the video to hopefully help somebody out there um, who's trying to, you know, on the cheap, create a uh, uh, sprinkler setup for their yard. I encourage you to be more elaborate than this, come up with a better better situation, uh, you know, by all means, if you have the, the money to uh, pay for a legitimate sprinkler system, obviously that would be far and above uh, this, but, you know, considering a sprinkler system in my neighborhood for this size yard could cost, you know, potentially eight or ten thousand um, dollars. This was a five hundred dollar solution that um, I can run myself and um, with not a lot of effort, although it is a daily task or, you know, a frequent task throughout the summer um, to get the lawn watered. I am open to criticism and feedback in the comments. If you have questions that I didn't adequately address uh, in the video, uh, please feel free to leave those in the comments and I will uh, comment uh, as I have time um, with uh, answers if, uh, if I have a good answer for you.